Hello, I'm Mary Tahan. It's very nice to be here with you. This past week on Monday, June 21st, as I'm sure most of you know, it was midwinter day in Antarctica, the winter solstice in the Southern Hemisphere. And so I wish all of you a happy midwinter day. And I would like to show you a presentation. I have been interested in writing about the polar regions for several years. I see these regions as both alien landscapes and familiar environments. The Antarctic and the Arctic are extreme places on Earth, but they're also places of discovery and cooperation. Cooperation between humans from different cultures and, as I believe, between humans and animals. My current series of books concentrates on the history of Antarctic exploration, including the era that has been termed the heroic age from 1897 to 1922. One of the focuses of my research and writings has been the animals who have played an important role in nature, on earth and alongside humans in the endeavor of exploration and of gaining knowledge of our world. My research on this specific series began several years ago when I traveled internationally to research historical archives and to document historic places relevant to early explorers. I researched in Norway, Argentina, and England, to name a few countries. There, I read expedition diaries, letters, and reports, and interviewed explorers' descendants. Then in 2012, I was fortunate to be invited as one of the selected artists to work on the Antarctic continent. This invitation came through the DNA, the National Directorate of the Antarctic, for which Mariano Mamoli was director, and which was in conjunction with the Argentine Antarctic Institute. Traveling to Antarctica by cargo ship, C-130 Hercules planes, zodiacs and twin otters, and the work I performed in Antarctica enabled me to see firsthand the alien and beautiful landscape. I was able to photograph the historic sites associated with the stories I was documenting. It gave me the chance to speak with scientists working in Antarctica and to hear their passion about the richness of this continent the rapid change of its recent environment past, and the tenuousness of its future. It is a privilege to witness the beauty, the harshness, and the fragility of this place, especially now that it continues to be threatened by climate change caused by humans' own actions. And so to document it was my mission. We were a group of artists who had come to portray this important continent of Antarctica through our own art. This was KA Colorado's Banquet in the Antarctic, performed on site on the continent, capturing the fragility of humans and animals within this fragile ecosystem and offering an homage to early explorers. This group of ice cores are part of his ice score sculptures, which he began in 2008. This particular group was created for NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and it captures the DNA and dialogue of the health of the marine systems and the endangered polar regions. I communicate the image, the message, and the history of Antarctica through the literary arts, through writing books. In Antarctica, I find a bond between humans and animals and the Antarctic environment. The landscapes and icecapes seem alien, but they are ourselves, our nature. They are isolating, but at the same time, they engender a feeling of belonging. It is impossible not to feel a certain sense of protectiveness toward this vast and beautiful part of our world. The Antarctic continent was the last place to be explored on our Earth. It was the equivalent of going to space, to another planet. It has brought knowledge to humans, and conversely, 
humans have brought their own imprint onto this continent. This December 14th marks the 110th anniversary of the South Pole discovery. It has been 110 years since Roald Amundsen became the first human to reach the South Pole. But he could not have done so without the 116 sled dogs who were part of his expedition. The sled dogs made this achievement possible. In fact, the dogs were the most important part of the expedition, according to Amundsen's own words. I chose to research who the 116 sled dogs were and what they accomplished to focus on their important role and to trace and document their history. In my book, Rolled Amundsen Sled Dogs, I identify their names, familial relations, friends, adventures, antics, and specific roles within the expedition and the discovery. They were polar dogs from Greenland who brought a connection between the Arctic and the Antarctic and who led the men to the South Pole. They pulled heavy sledges, approximately 400 kilograms, helped build depots, climbed high mountains, crossed deep crevasses, and many times saved the men's lives. I felt it was important to shine a spotlight on the animals who made this achievement possible and who have helped in the polar exploration. Most of them paid a dear price for their heroic efforts. I also wanted to show the relationship that the men had with these dogs, how the dogs helped them practically, but also psychologically and socially. How they created a home away from home in Antarctica. This was something I was able to glean from reading the men's diaries. It seems clear that without these sled dogs, the Norwegian Antarctic expedition of 1910 to 1912 would not have been successful in being the first to reach the South Pole. And without the dogs, perhaps the expedition would not have reached the pole at all. It was time to give these dogs their due credit. This cooperation between animals and humans is something that I feel is very important to portray. Remarkably, some of these dogs went on to help the Douglas Mawson expedition members who were stranded in Antarctica for a second winter during 1912 to 1914. I quote from my sequel book, The Return of the South Pole Sled Dogs. In this cold and dark August, especially with the specter of mental illness and total isolation overshadowing their thoughts, the men had been cheered by the sledge dogs who would welcome them warmly, even during the coldest of seasons and darkest of times, who would withstand illness and surgery and pain with the best disposition and who would play and eat vivaciously, reminding the humans that life was to be seized and caressed, to be chewed and savored, and to be immersed in thoroughly, as one would thoroughly roll in freshly fallen snow. This is an apt thought during isolation in Antarctica and during isolation in our own current times today. This December also marks the 120th anniversary of the launching of the Swedish Antarctic Expedition. This was the very first expedition to overwinter on the Antarctic continent solely for scientific study. It was led by Otto Nordenschold and set sail from Buenos Aires, Argentina on December 21, 1901. I chose to spotlight the lesser known member of this expedition, the underdog, so to speak. He was a young Navy sub-lieutenant named Jose Maria Sobral, who was the only Argentine member of the Swedish expedition and who has been mostly overlooked by history. Sobral set sail on the ship Antarctic and confided the details of his adventures to his diary. By analyzing and publishing his diary in my book, 
the life of Jose Maria Sobral, I attempted to bring his history to light. Sobral and the rest of the expedition endured hardships when their ship sank, caught in the ice. The 29 expedition members ended up spending two consecutive winters in Antarctica while separated in three groups at three distant locations. They were not equipped for a second winter in Antarctica. And so they relied on the Antarctic animals around them for sustenance and for life. The seals and the penguins gave their lives so the men could live. Sobral himself felt isolated in so many ways, geographically, environmentally, socially, and culturally. And yet he and the others persevered. Cooperation was the key to their scientific findings and their survival. Cooperation is an important theme in Antarctica, especially international cooperation. It is paramount among countries in the Antarctic today and it was crucial to early and mid-century exploration in Antarctica. Recently, I wrote a story about a member of the British Antarctic Survey who was stationed in Antarctica in the 1950s and 1960s and who befriended the members of an Argentine Antarctic base. The British member was James Leonard Franks and the Argentine base commander was Gustavo A. Giro Tapper. I had the good fortune to interview Jim Franks about his time in Antarctica. We met aptly on midwinter day in 2017 in Saskatchewan, Canada. Sadly, he has since passed away. He was an exceptional person and the passion and excitement of Antarctica was with him when we spoke. Jim Franks was a senior meteorological observer, a surveying assistant and sledge driver. His most beloved title, he told me, was dog man. Of course, since the Mid Madrid protocol went into effect, no dogs have been allowed in Antarctica and that has been since the mid 1990s. But the lasting impression they made lives on. I also had the good fortune to interview the family of the late Gustavo Giro. Gustavo Giro succeeded to cross the Antarctic Peninsula north to south from Base Esperanza, which is Bahia Esperanza, to Base San Martin, which is at Bahia Margarita in 1962. And he later trekked from Base Sobral on the Filchner ice shelf to the South Pole in 1965 as a member of the first Argentine expedition to reach the South Pole overland. Both these men embody the spirit of Antarctic friendship, of banding together and of pursuing science nature and exploration in Antarctica. What this says about humans is very important. That is our ability to deal with ourselves in an alien landscape, our talent to overcome adversity and our willingness to work with others, both humans and animals. And what this says about animals is that they are a very important part of life. They are heroes in their own right. They are a connection between humans and nature and the environment, and they must be protected and their environment preserved. This is Antarctica. It is both the best and the harshest of our world, our environmental nature and our own human nature. The polar regions are truly the heart of our humanity. Communicating Antarctica through the literary art of writing is the telling of the story of our humanity, our nature, our environment, the animals who inhabit the planet with us and our world.
Thank you.